2014 FRQ number one. Uh, obviously, it's a monopoly, right? We've got that downward sloping demand curve, so we know immediately it's a monopoly. We've got that marginal revenue curve below demand. Uh, all right, A, using the numbers given in the graph, identify each of the following for the profit maximizing monopolist price, quantity. So we know we find profit max, which we have to do for every, is where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. You have to know that. And it's usually the first thing you have to find on every graph. Looks like our price is 40 and our quantity is 4. Remember now, your demand curve you have your mister. I don't know if some of your teachers teach Mr. DARP. Here's your marginal revenue, which is your mister. This is your DARP still. It's your demand, average revenue, and price. This is your price curve. So everything has to bounce off your price curve. So our price looks like it's at uh, 40. Sorry, 40. And our quantity is just 4. Allocative efficient quantity. We need to know that allocative efficiency is always where price equals marginal cost. So here's our marginal cost. College Board jerks have given us a horizontal marginal cost, ATC, and long run average total cost curve. But if you know that where allocative efficiency is where price equals marginal cost, you know that this is your price curve. This is your marginal cost curve. We know that's allocative efficiency right there. That's the quantity of goods society would like to have. At 20. So that quantity would be up oh, 8 at a price of 20. This is also what we would say is where if this if this monopoly was turned into a perfectly competitive firm, it would produce at allocative efficiency. So a perfectly competitive firm would produce right there at that price. And that quantity. Well, we know as monopolies always have a higher price and a lower quantity. They can get away with that because there's barriers to entry. They can keep firms out from coming in and competing. All right. Uh, B, at the profit maximizing quantity from part A1, is the monopolist experiencing economies of scale and explain? Remember, if we go back to your output and cost unit section, your long run average total cost curve is really split into three sections. This is your economies of scale section. This is your constant cost section. And this is just what we call diseconomies of scale. All right. This implies that the costs are constant. They don't change. Right. Our, look here at our long run average total cost curve here. It's flat or horizontal, implying that we must be in the constant um, and I guess the way we would just answer this, at the profit maximizing quantity is a monopolist experiencing economies of scale. Economies of scale implies that as the more I produce, my costs fall. We can see here that as we produce more, my costs are constant. So we would say no. That would be the first thing I'd answer. Um, as costs are constant. I think that'll get us the points. Um, all right. Number C, now assume that the monopolist produces 10 units. All right. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. It gets a little, yeah, we got a little too much on the board here. Now they want us to produce at 10 units. So at 10 units, we can see that's my marginal cost. The price I charge for this good is $10, right? Remember, that's your DARP curve. So if I produce, remember now, a monopolist can either choose his price or his quantity. He can't choose both. So if he chooses to produce at 10, the price has to be 10. I hope that makes sense. If we were to produce at 2, our price would be 50. If we produced at 4, the price has to be 40. If I choose to produce and sell it at $30, I have to produce a quantity of six. Understand that because it's important that the monopolist can choose his price or his quantity, but he can't choose both. 
All right. Uh, pay attention here, Charles. They produce 10 units using the numbers in the graph calculate each of the following the monopolist economic profit. Well, I can see that his average total cost is way up here, and the price he can charge for his good is $10. He produces 10 units, so he looks like he's losing $10 on every unit of good that he sells. So at this $10 price and this quantity of 10, it looks like his profit is negative 100. Can we see that? Because his total revenue, remember now, total revenue is price times quantity. So his total revenue is $10 times the quantity he produced. So his total revenue is 100 bucks. It's just 10 times 10. But it looks like his total cost is 20 times 10. Right. This is his cost for all units, his average cost for all units, and he produces 10 units. So it looks like his total cost is 200. Obviously, if your total cost is bigger than your total revenue, you have a loss. Right. Um, and we can see his total cost is 200, his total revenue is 100. Therefore, he has a loss of $100. Consumer surplus. Consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is always, we say it like this, consumer surplus is everything above the price, but below the demand curve. So here's our price. We bang into our demand curve. That has to be all of our consumer surplus. Uh, calculate. So we need to calculate, right? The consumer surplus from 60 to 10 is 50 that's our height and then we went from 0 to 10 so our base is 10 remember it's just a triangle so one half base times height uh, 50 times 10 I got those backwards uh, or we could yeah divided by 2 right or times 0.5 however you want to do it uh, 500 divided by 2 is obviously 250 uh, dead weight loss. Now, see, this is tricky, College Board, you jerks, right? In that we know where allocative efficiency is. You and I have talked about that. Allocative efficiency is where price equals marginal cost. This is the amount of goods that society would like to get. Allocatively efficient, where price equals marginal cost, is allocative efficiency. But they're producing 10 of these units. Can we recognize that we have a dead weight loss triangle on this side? This doesn't happen very often because most of the time, think about this, is that we would be producing on this side. Society wants that allocatively efficient point. So wherever we're producing, we'd have a triangle on the other side, and that's what we're most used to. This time we can see that our dead weight loss triangle is on this side. So let's see, uh, they want us to calculate that area of deadweight loss. We can see the height right there is 10, and it looks like the base is 2. So 8 times 10 divided by 2. Is that right? Let me say that again. Yeah, 10 is the height. 2 is the base. So 2 times 10. There we go. 2 times 10 is 20 divided by 2 would be 10. Oops. would be 10 as our dead weight loss. Consumer surplus is 250. 10 is dead weight loss. Economic profit is a negative 100. Obviously, I don't have a lot of space. You would be have much more space on your exam and be able to do it nice and clean and organized and labeled and do all of those things. At what quantity is demand unit elastic? Now, we have to know that where max revenue is, is unit elasticity. I'm going to put that DARP back there. It's important. Where marginal revenue is zero, that is what we call uh, max revenue. This is max revenue at that point right there. Where we have max revenue, we go straight up, and wherever we hit our demand curve, that section is unit elastic right there. 
So when they say, what quantity is demand unit elastic? It has to be at the quantity where marginal revenue is zero. So we would just say six. Now, price discrimination. Suppose a monopolist perfectly price discriminates and chooses the quantity that maximizes profits. First of all, you have to know where that is. When a monopolist perfectly price discriminates, what it implies is he can choose for every unit he sells, he will choose to charge the highest price and be able to get away with it. So he'll choose all of these prices for all of these different quantity of units. Um, this second unit will be sold at 50. This fourth unit will be sold at 40. The fifth unit will be sold at 35. Because of that, because he can get the highest price possible, his demand curve becomes his Mr. Darp curve again, right? So he doesn't have a marginal revenue down here. This becomes his marginal revenue and demand. In essence, we have a downward sloping Mr. Darp curve. And if that's the case, and here's marginal revenue and here's marginal cost, it makes sense to sort of understand the perfectly price discriminating monopolist will still produce a profit max where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So if he can charge all of these different prices, these higher prices, the highest price anybody's willing to pay for each quantity of good that he produces and he can get it, his Mr. Darp curve becomes that demand curve or that demand becomes Mr. Darp now. He will produce where marginal cost and marginal revenue come together and he'll produce that quantity right there. So at that price. Now at that quantity, we know the quantity that he produces and we know the last price of the last unit that he sells. They want to know what the profit is. This is our ATC curve here. So there's our cost, right? This is our total cost down here, this rectangle. That involves it all of the, let's be fancy and make it a different color if I can. They just changed all my pen stuff on me here. Um, this would be all of our profit, all of this area. And this should make sense, right? For this unit, he's able to charge that price and that's his cost. At this unit, he's able to charge that price and that would be his cost. So all of this becomes what we would call profit. Uh, do they want us to calculate it? I'm sure the value of each. So it looks like our profit is from 60 to 20. It's just that area of that triangle again, right? So 40, the base is 8. Uh, 40 times 8 uh, divided by 2. Uh, 8, 16, 24, 32. So 320 divided by 2. 150, 160. I hope that's right so I don't have to redo this. Um, yeah, that looks like 160. Um, consumer surplus. Just understand that you should know, obviously, if all of this is, if all of this is profit, can there be any consumer surplus? That's the lovely thing, maybe not lovely, but that's the thing about price discriminating monopolist. Uh, there is a cheat sheet on my blog uh, specifically for price discriminating monopolist. Take a look at it. The idea is that there is no deadweight loss doesn't exist because they're producing the allocatively efficient quantity. So there can't be any deadweight loss, right? We only had deadweight loss when they were forced to produce at 10 units. So if they're producing here, no deadweight loss. There's also no consumer surplus, right? Because it's all profit. They can charge the highest price possible. Um, so no consumer surplus. Uh, I think that's it. So, but they would want us, did we do consumer surplus? Oh. Zero. Yeah, we did it. So consumer surplus would be zero. Monopolist profits would be 160. All right, guys, that was fun. Take care, uh, work hard, and see you soon. Thanks. Bye.